My name is Neil Bird. I'm a research fellow here at ODI in London, where I work within the Climate and Environment Programme. We all know that much attention has been directed at the international efforts to raise funding to assist developing countries respond to climate change. And this is reflected in the debate over the commitments made under the United Nations Framework Convention for Climate Change. However, less attention has been paid to how this finance may be managed within the recipient countries. Why is this important? It's important because this is what will lead to successful implementation of climate change actions. Now, the interplay of climate finance with domestically raised public funds parallels the longer experience of channeling official development assistance into national systems. And therefore, development agencies such like DFID have much experience, relevant experience to bring to this new issue. Public finance for climate change can make use of either government or non-government systems. So a key question for both the providers and the recipients of such finance is under what circumstances should that funding go through government systems and when should extra budgetary arrangements be utilised? In fact, the same choice has been there for the delivery of aid over many years. And in that context, the use of government systems has been the subject of much discussion and analysis. The general challenges facing public finance management systems are well known. And these apply to the resourcing of climate change actions as much as in any other area of public policy. In that respect, climate finance is no different from public spending on education, health, or even defence. However, the nature of climate change does heighten some of these challenges, and these are um, what I'd now like to um, address. Firstly, unlike government's concern over health and education, climate change is a new policy priority. It wasn't discussed in government circles. It wasn't the subject of public spending 20 years ago. It is now a new concern. What that means within the public administration of many countries is there's very little guidance on how to incorporate climate change considerations into the national budgeting system. So for example, what many governments depend upon through budget circulars, guidance notes to line ministries as to how they construct their budgets around or in response to particular themes simply do not exist. What this means at the present time is a greater involvement by ministries of finance is necessary if climate change policies are to be well reflected in the national budget. So there is a, a body of technical work that needs to be done drawing in people from public finance management backgrounds. Relevant public finance management reforms relevant to climate change, to the national climate change response include for example, extending public finances beyond the annual budget cycle. Now, this already is a huge area of uh, reform in many countries, typically by developing medium-term expenditure frameworks. This is important for climate change to secure the multi-year funding that this new policy priority necessitates. In addition to reforms on multi-year budgeting, the whole question of the reliability of funding is key when it comes to climate change, especially for public service delivery and in particular through local government service providers. The reason being is that many climate change programs need to be investment orientated at this time. And therefore, having security over the level of funding over several years is um, an important factor. A second challenge concerning national budget systems 
is that climate change has no strong institutional base in the government administration in many countries. What that means is that within government's classification of budgets that uses an administrative classification, there is no easy source to look for climate change funding as opposed to spending on health or education. In many countries, the spending by the Ministry of Health can be used as a proxy for government's policy um, intent in health. That simply is not the case um, for climate change because it is uh, an issue that cuts across many line ministries. So what that means is that there is a reliance on the on classification systems and having the ability to track spending um, in different ways. The tracking of climate change expenditures depend in part upon program-based budgeting reforms, which again are, are happening to various levels, to various extents in a number of countries. The need is to identify public spending by outputs and strategic objectives of which climate change would be one. However, even with such reforms, the scope to identify climate change relevant actions is constrained by the imprecision over what to include. What does climate finance actually mean? What are the actions under which that term can be labeled? And what we've found so far is that the, the most pragmatic response is to look for some national consensus to be reached. There are two prominent themes related to climate finance and public finance management, which the reader should be aware. Two themes that have been the subject of a lot of discussion and there is an emerging body of literature on them. The first is national climate funds and the second is the concept of direct access as it applies to multilateral public funds. The former appears primarily as a pragmatic response to fast track the delivery of climate finance where national PFM systems are weak by using an extra budgetary mechanism. I suppose my main question on national climate finance is whether they will lead to sustainable outcomes. In this year, as we move towards the, uh, the hope for ratification of new sustainable development goals, I think we need also to move towards considering reforms that give a good prospect of medium to, to long-term success rather than focus on the immediate and short-term gains that may not embed themselves over the long term. The concept of direct access reflects more of an attempt by the international community to invest in strengthening national capacities and therefore speaks to the issue that I talked about earlier on sustainability and national ownership over the financial resources that are now becoming available to assist countries respond to the development challenges brought about by climate change. This is something that we can expect to see feature prominently on at least on the margins of the discussions in Paris at the end of this year. So again, it would um, now is the time to have an understanding on what people are proposing such a concept might include, because there are various perspectives. Thank you.